Hey guys, Nikhil here from Home Banao with another interview to help you make better decisions at your home. With me is Shankar. Shankar has been in the UPS space for a very long time. Have you been doing this since they started in India? In the battery industry, it's exactly 40 years. Wow, so for 40 years he's been doing installations of batteries in homes and offices across companies, across categories. And in this video, I want to do a deep dive into batteries. Shankar, thank you so much for joining us. My a pleasure. quick introduction about yourself, what were experiences, what do you think our audience should expect from you? Why I got into the industry is that first of all, my father, Mr. Venkatraman, late Mr. Venkatraman, he was the branch manager of Excite Batteries from 1955 to 1985. Wow, okay. So he worked for the company. So my interest has always been uh, when I was about 18, 19. I was uh, studying B.Sc. Comic Chemistry and at that time somehow it just got into my mind that I should start my own business and that has got to be obviously batteries because that is where I draw the strength from my father. With the help of my father I started in 1983. So we are just completing another few months I will be completing 40 years. Wow. So I just finished the B.Sc. Chemistry and then I started business in the uh, battery at that time you know the application was very limited it was there was no ups system at that point of time it was only vehicle batteries and the vehicles were highly limited it was only fiat and ambassador <laughs> and nothing else so still with the back to the wall and my hands tied at the back with hardly any market and uh, you know hardly anybody had a car at those days so i just still that determination i just started and after some time a friend of mine took me to Central Electrochemical Research Institute, which is the Government of India Battery Research Lab in Karakudi, which is in Tamil Nadu. Okay. So he came one day and said, having started battery business, would you like to learn much more about batteries? I said, obviously. <laughs> so the same day, I was okay. so thrilled. Because at a very young age, you know, when I was hardly 22, one thing I realized was that I need to be an expert, subject matter expert. Okay. That somehow that concept stuck to me. Okay. And the same day, I was a one-man show. I just wound up my uh, business uh, and then went there and I remember paying them some 35,000 rupees or something fees and and came back to Bangalore and packed my bags and went back there and stayed there Okay. Uh, for, for a few uh, weeks and then I studied about batteries, lead acid batteries under everybody there is a PhD in electrochemistry. Okay. So I could sit with them all day and uh, you know ask them doubts. And my education being in chemistry, it was much easier for me to understand that language. Okay. And when I came back from there, I was much, much, much wiser okay. than what the industry had at that point of time or even today. Okay. See, See nobody comes into the battery industry with uh, B.Sc. Chemistry or M.Sc. Chemistry or a B.Tech. Uh, chemistry and all that nobody comes into the market like that right if you see most of the people in any part of the country and more so in Bangalore because I am focusing in Bangalore is that you hardly find anybody who has got any educational qualification in the first place and even if they have it could be a BCom or a BA or something like that which is not relevant to this industry so he doesn't understand what is chemistry what is happening within the battery what is the acid inside the battery what it means to say voltage they have absolutely no clue to what is happening inside. See, out of some experience, they could say that this cell is gone or the battery is gone, something they could say. But it is not out of in-depth theoretical knowledge. Okay. It is just some knowledge which they have gained over a period of time. It is very clear to me that customers are taking a huge risk when they go to a person who is not qualified. <laughs> you know, even if you go to a, you can't go to an MBBS doctor and say, I have an eye problem, can you check? Then you can't do that. So here too, it's more or less similar that this is a product of electrochemistry and you can't go to somebody who is not educated or go to an electronics engineer who takes care of a UPS asking him to check your batteries. It is too irrelevant for their two different fields. That is power electronics, this is electrochemistry. Okay. How can you ask a guy who has done a power electronics to check a battery, which right. is a different subject. So this is where I found that customers were being taken for a ride not really willingly because of lack of knowledge. This is even back in 1980s? It's been 1980s or even till today. <laughs> nothing has changed. Absolutely okay. nothing has changed. Okay. I challenge you take a good battery, a battery which is say two years old but in good condition. You take it to a nearby battery guy, nine out of ten guys will tell you battery is gone, change it. <laughs> 
this is an open challenge you can see you will have to tell him that it's not working that's the only condition okay right once you tell that he knows that you have you not come prepared to buy a battery right so he will simply do something see the voltage and say nice sir battery is gone you have to buy a new one okay this is 9 out of 10 maybe even 10 out of 10 but i don't want to be so ruthless <laughs> it could be 9 out of 10 okay so you came back from the institute and institute with renewed energy and confidence that now i am much better than most others okay in the subject and chemistry been my college subject also aha uh-huh. and now with 40 years of experience field experience it is not that you know i was sitting in air conditioned room and talking right i was a man with hands on experience uh-huh. in the field so i used to go to customers places or corporates i used to go everywhere uh-huh. and uh, studying the atmosphere see there are batteries for air conditioned atmosphere there are batteries for non ac atmosphere right so there are batteries when a company however big a company is when they give a warranty it is a conditional warranty there is no battery which is unconditional warranty there is no such thing so if you go buy a car battery and use it for a ups or for a generator it doesn't carry warranty at all <laughs> a dealer out of ignorance may sell you the battery with a warranty card saying that sir you see it carries 3 years warranty but it is a conditional warranty even right. the dealer himself may not know this okay. because out of ignorance not out of anything else okay. and his anxiety to sell a battery okay. they may not know they'll say that it carries 3 years warranty but in case it fails within the warranty period and the company service center guy comes there and says that you are using the wrong battery for this application the battery is rejected wow. it is legally rejected you can't do anything about it you will have to end up paying again for a new battery and buy a battery again so when you came back i mean when do you think uh, battery started coming into homes so right? that is i would think about 20 22 20 something like that 23 years back or 24 years or maximum say 25 years back around 1995 who were your clientele you know in the initial part of your business see having settled myself in the car battery industry initially mm-hmm. every car battery owner was automatically my customer for ups <laughs> of course yeah anybody who walked in is capable of buying a ups Correct. so it became it became a logical addition to my uh, basket okay and we used to tell customers we have got a ups would you like to take that and already confidence was built up okay that we are qualified in the field we know what it is and those days when the ambassadors and the fiats were coming in you you we used to have plenty of electrical issues because they were obviously not advanced cars like what we have today right so every day almost we used to get cars saying that my it's not starting it's not charging because they had very primitive dynamos and Uh, starters and all that those days correct so we used to spend so much of time to them to convince them there's nothing wrong with the battery and then uh, get that starter or something rectified because they would have been told by somebody else that the battery is gone <laughs> so the customer will come to us in a f- furious mood yeah i bought this only 6 months back and uh, your battery is not okay so we used to have a tie up with a very senior electrical uh, workshop here okay. and we used to take customers there and tell them see this is what has happened okay just rectify it and give i don't want to get into any argument because the customer doesn't understand because he's been misled by somebody else <laughs> so get the job done with the same battery and show it to him so we used to do this religiously on a day to day basis okay and ensure that not a single battery was replaced unless and until it has failed okay so thereby we gained a tremendous confidence in customers and okay. people would started believing us whatever we tell they would say that if you tell that's ultimate for me so that trust you were able to carry over even to ups then obviously see moment you have trust the customer is ready to buy whatever i sell okay the moment if i sell put some fish into the battery box and sell they are ready to buy because trust is already built okay. and they know we are qualified So now that we have this understanding as we go along the interview guys I'll be asking a lot about you know how do you choose a UPS and a battery for your home things to avoid etc so keep watching so moving on to my next part of the questioning shankar now every single home wants to have 24/7 power that's a requirement jobs depend on it like my work completely depends on me being able to access internet and my computer all day long if that doesn't happen i i can't work similarly i'm sure in a lot of regions you know power is mandatory like uh, maybe the weather is too hot they need to have fan on all the time and things like that so from that standpoint considering pretty much every single household is a customer for a ups and a battery 
I really want to understand how does one go about making this decision? What are the parameters one should consider to make sure that he has 24 7 power in his home? See, generally people uh, get guided by their electrician or maybe family members and all that who know a little bit of UPS. None of them is an authority, including an electrical contractor, he is not an authority. See, if it is my customer already, they know everything. They'll say that you please put a UPS, what you think is the best. Whatever battery or UPS, they'll say just you go ahead and do what you feel is the best. When it's a new customer and they will tell me that, sir, I want a 2 kVA. I don't give them the price for 2 kVA. What I tell them is, sir, if you don't mind, can I know what is the application? Okay. Then they will say it is a three bedroom house. Okay. Now I said, who told you to put a 2 kVA for a three bedroom house? <laughs> okay. They'll say, no, sir, it is my contractor who told me. Right? Okay. Now there must be some interest in him to try and push a bigger UPS. Right. Now I tell them, see, I don't supply UPS just because you're asking me for a 2 kVA. Huh. Okay. I tell the 3 kVA, it's a three bedroom house. Okay. How many lights and fans are you going to use? Four lights, four fans. Worst case, right. and a TV. There is no way you require a 2 kVA for this. Because when you go for a 2 kVA, what happens is it's a two battery system. Okay. So each battery is 10, 12,000. Approximately a decent battery will cost you 10, 12, 13,000 rupees. So with the UPS, it becomes something like 35, 40,000 rupees. I tell them, don't go for that. It's a waste. You just buy a 1 kVA with a single battery. You will save probably 15,000, 18,000 rupees will be your savings. Okay. And I give them so much of guarantee that I tell them, if you have any doubts in whatever I'm suggesting, I'll install it for you, you use it for 3-4 days and then pay me. That much guarantee I'll give you. If you're not happy, I will take back the UPS and batteries. So the first question which you end up asking them is, what's the size of your home? And then what is the load? See, without knowing the application. Okay. Okay. How, how can you suggest? So I, can you define like, what do you mean by knowing the application? Like what all should you need to know before you choose a UPS? See, let's say most of the customers are say 2 bedroom, 3 bedroom house. Correct. Okay. It's obvious their load will be about 3-4 lights and 3 fans. Correct. When the bedroom itself is 2 including the living room, it will be 3 fans. Okay. Let's say worst case, somebody is there in every room. It's 3 lights, 3 fans and a TV or a computer. Right? For this, a 1 kV is more than enough. Now, similarly, a 3 bedroom. It will be what? 3 lights, 3 fans, 1 TV, 1 computer or something like that. For that also, 1 kV should be enough. But supposing somebody says, mine is a three or four bedroom house or slightly bigger house, like say 2000 square feet. Nowadays you have 1.5 kVA with a single battery. Okay. Okay. So there's no addition of a second battery there. Okay. So like this on a almost daily or every week, at least two, three customers, when I give this, this suggestion to them, straight away they save 15,000 rupees on the second battery. <laughs> and the cost difference between a 1.5 and 2. There will be a difference of over 3,000 rupees there plus the cost of the battery. Hmm. Almost 15,000 rupees will be their saving. Okay. They will not even be aware of this. So according to you, first priority is first figure out that what do you exactly need. So typically how do you do this calculation? So see, it doesn't depend on only one factor whether it's a two bedroom, three bedroom. Mm -hmm. See there are cases where three bedroom house there will be grandfather, grand grandparents, then parents, then two, three children. That's a particular typical load. So I don't give based on whether you have a two bedroom, three. I don't. That's not the only information I require. Okay. The next one is asking how many people are there in the house. Okay. So there are times when they say that my children are abroad, only myself and my wife are there. It could be a three bedroom, four bedroom house, but the load is still limited. <laughs> so I tell them that, sir, if if you do not have people coming into your house on a regular basis, if only two of you are there most of the time, you can go for a one kVA. So there's a very interesting word you use here, it's called load. So is this the primary factor which you have to consider when you're choosing a UPS? And Absolutely, battery? because without the load, see suppose there are cases where somebody may be having a three bedroom house. But when I talk to them, they will say they've got a TV of 60 inches. Because now so many people are so prosperous, mm -hmm. they would have thrown their 21 inch TV <laughs> and uh, their children in US would have told them buy uh, some 15, 60 inch TV, they'll be yeah. having a massive TV. Right. Somebody will have a projector. Right. All sorts of things are there. So when you talk to them, what applies to the neighbor's house need not apply to your house. Makes sense. So when you're talking about load, the contributing factors are the number of 
things you have plugged in plugged in so typically speaking you know what are those things which are which end up consuming a lot of load which people don't expect see what happens is some people they say i would like to have a washing machine hmm. or a grinder hmm, i hmm, tell hmm. them sir washing machine grinder are not emergency <laughs> when the power comes back you can always use right there is no need for you to uh, you know use the washing machine what's the emergency there So don't go for a bigger UPS. Go for just a one kV, one point five is enough. You know, so washing machine grinders end up taking a lot of power, obviously. Obviously, it consumes. It's a motor, right? So it will consume uh, much more. Instead of one kV, you end up buying a two kV, spending for nothing. It does not. It's of no use. You right. can always use it when the power comes back, isn't it? Fully so agree. load is the one of the factors. What else? Second do you factor is the number of people. Okay. Right. Number of people. So these two factors will decide the capacity of the UPS. Okay. This is why I said a three-bedroom house. I might have given a one kva, hmm. but there may be two people there. Right. The neighbor he would have referred me to the neighbor's house. Hmm. I will not tell him that, sir. You also take one kva <laughs> because there the number of people could be more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grandparents, parents, grandchildren. Right. We don't know. There could right. be six people, seven people in the house. Both are three-bedroom. So according to your general rule of thumb, is every two people you need one kva? Is that no, correct? No, I don't go like that. Uh, hmm. I ask them number of people. Uh-huh. So then, when they say, "Sir, we are six people in the house, so three bedrooms. So can I take three fans, maybe three four lights, right. and how big is the TV you have?" Hmm. He'll say, "I've got a 40 inch or a 50 inch." Hmm. He'll say, "So okay, sir, if this is the case, hmm. maybe one KV will be a little bit of a dilemma. It, it could be a little tricky. Better you go for a 1.5. Okay. It's a single battery system. You don't spend on the second battery." Correct. But a small difference between one and one point five, you will be absolutely comfortable without any compromise anywhere. So coming back to this, you ask load, you ask number of people, you do not ask how long do you want your. That is the third question. So what is the th- what yeah, is that? Third question again. Huh? I ask them what is the backup time you are comfortable. Then they say I don't. There are many people who say I do not know what I should go for. Right. Right. Especially I tell from them. Especially from a backup time. Right. Tell them. See, you are living in this house for so many years. Hmm. You know how many hours the power goes in this area, right? See, for example, Banarghat Road. People said if it goes, it doesn't come the whole day. Correct, correct. But that's not the case if you are living in a Indra Nagar or a BTM or a Kora Mangla. That may not happen that way in that sort Absolutely. of an area. So I tell them if you are in Kora Mangla or Indra Nagar, I'm sure it doesn't feel more than two to three hours. So don't go for more than three hours. I think three hours is fair enough. Okay, you can go for that. But where supposing somebody says I'm in Kengeri, hmm. then I will ask him. Mm-hmm. Have you come across days where it has gone for six hours? Mm. He said, "Ha, sir. Even last month we didn't have power for six hours." Then I'll tell them go for a slightly bigger battery. Okay. So that it gives you four to six hours. Otherwise, what happens is if I try to give him a battery for three hours backup, and at the, and one day there'll be no power for six hours, having invested so much of money, this UPS will still not work after three four hours. Correct. Because it would have gone dead. That day he will think, "Oh my God, I should have gone for a slightly bigger battery. It would have given me longer backup." So, say from three hours to six hours, or even say I wanted to run for twelve hours at least, one entire day. So, what's the difference for the same two BHK house, for example? See, with two, in the house, with what happens is hmm. when I say three lights, three fans, and a TV or a computer, hmm. nobody is going to use everything together. <laughs> Right, it doesn't happen that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is only for more out of some calculation. A worst case scenario, I ask them. Correct. See, during daytime, children are out to school. Correct. The parents will be in office. Maybe the grandparents will be there, or the housewife may be there. So the load is limited. Right. Night after ten o'clock, when everybody goes to bed, only the fans will be on. Two, three fans. Even if it is two or three bedroom house, two or three fans will be on. Lights are off. Correct. When is the maximum load being used? It is only between six thirty and about nine thirty. Correct. When the TV may be on, when the fans may be on, the lights may be on. All three together, it's only during that evening time. Correct. So I tell them you take for that three hours. You take. Okay. During daytime, the load is twenty thirty percent, not more than that. Correct. Because nobody is at home. Correct. Night again, two fans. Again, it is only about twenty thirty percent. Correct. Isn't it? So when I give a battery for three hours, it'll end up giving you six to seven hours. Okay. If because, you've done the right math. Yes, because battery is just like a water tank. Right. You use the water, it, it depletes. Correct. If you're not going to use it, it's going to remain there. It's yeah. not like a generator. Yes. The yes. generator, whether you just switch it on, it consumes, irrespective of whether there's much load or not, it'll consume diesel. 
Correct. Battery is not like that. It's like a water. You just open the tap, water comes, otherwise water is safe there. Okay. Here also, if the road is reduced, automatically it will give you 6-7 hours. There are a lot of customers who tell me, Sunday there was no power, morning to evening, but your battery went on the whole day. <laughs> that is because the load is much less. Okay. When they know power has gone, they automatically go and switch off everything. I have a very curious question here. So, uh, specifically about refrigerators, when if they are connected to the UPS, how, how much does a refrigerator end up consuming? It can be about 0.75 kVA. Thumb rule is about 0.75 kVA. A single refrigerator? Because it's a compressor load. It's not just okay. an ordinary bulb load. or. So, a, it's a, a, a refrigerator also comes in that washing machine sort of criteria. Yes, they are all, this is a compressor. That's okay. a motor, this is a compressor. Okay. So, when the compressor switches on, it will consume a lot of power. That momentary power is high. Okay. It's a momentary power, just like a computer monitor. Mm -hmm. When you switch it on, it consumes power. Then it comes down. Same way refrigerator, the initial surge current is what? If you undersize the UPS, the moment the compressor switches on, the UPS will trip on overload. So this goes to my next parameter. After backup time, do you ask any other questions also to understand things like say... Uh, See, first, there are three parameters. One is the UPS capacity mm -hmm. based on the number of people or if it is a small and medium enterprise, I ask them how many computers you have, okay. how many printers you have, whether it's a laser printer or a normal printer Got and it. how many laptops, whatever it is. I ask them, tell me the total load. They'll tell me. Then I'll tell them this is the UPS required. Then also I will ask them, is there any possibility of expansion of your business? Mm. Maybe you will add three more computers in the next one year. Mm. I don't want you to end up buying one more UPS after because it gets complicated. In a small office of say 1000 square feet, you can have only one UPS. <laughs> you cannot have two, <laughs> two UPS in the same circuit. Okay. So when you buy three more computers huh? you and you already bought UPS. the UPS for the previous load, now what will you do? <laughs> You will have to junk the UPS and buy higher capacity. Right. So I talk to them and find out, do you have, do you have any plans of expansion? Okay. They will say, sir, my office is only 1000 square feet or 800 square feet. Maybe maximum I can put three more computers. I can't put more than that even if I want. Okay. So then I will tell them that I would suggest you go for a slightly bigger one so that I don't want you to come back to me for another UPS because you can't install another UPS. Wiring gets complicated. You can't have two trains running on the same track. Okay. Okay, so you will end up giving back that old UPS at a throwaway price and you buy a bigger U. All this gets complicated. I tell them you just go for a slightly bigger one now. Even sorted. if you expand, you will not come back to me for another UPS. So, okay. So you brought up a very specific point here called surge. Surge current is required. There are a lot of devices which require this, you know, there's a ramp up and then it stabilizes. Yes. So how do you account for this? Is it in the battery or is it in the UPS? UPS. It's always in the UPS. UPS. See, the current, when it, when it sucks power, hmm. the UPS should be capable of withstanding that power. So let's move on to my next question then. You've explained for batteries what you look for. For UPS, what are the parameters you consider? It is the load, the nature of the load. Nature of the load. Nature of the load. So what, what do you mean by that? See, if it is a house, hmm. light, fan, TV. Okay. These are all not demanding loads. Okay. Right. This is not going to create any huge problem for me or for my uh, customers. Because they are all natural loads in any house. Okay. But supposing somebody says, I want the refrigerator to be connected. Hmm. Then there's a surge current there. Hmm, 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 hmm. That's a compressor load. Correct. I persuade them not to connect the refrigerator unless and until there are medicines. Okay. I tell them, do you have any medicines in that? They say, no, I don't have any medicine. Then why do you want the refrigerator? Huh? Because the chillness in the refrigerator will be maintained for at least 2-3 hours. Okay. It's not going to become hot within 5 minutes, isn't it? Correct. It's going to retain the chillness for at least 2 hours. Correct. By the time the power is going to come back. Okay. Okay. Invariably. So, I tell them only if you have medicines, you buy a UPS according to that. Okay. But if it is just the usual stuff, food stuff, what you have, it's not necessary for you to spend 10,000 rupees more just to connect the refrigerator. Most 99 or 100 percent, they'll say, yes, I got your point. So they generally avoid the refrigerator. Say, for example, someone wants to plug in air conditioners to the UPS. Does it make Same sense? Same thing. Uh, air conditioner also is a compressor load. Okay. Right. There are people who tell me I want one AC. I tell them it doesn't make any meaning at all because especially in Bangalore, the temperature is not 40-45. Right, right, right. Okay. Let's say your AC was working for one hour, one and a half hours. Hmm. In Bangalore, it's already the room will be so cool. 
fan is sufficient for you to run through the day what, night what about across india you know in some northern cities say mumbai see today airport. ups systems are designed to take any load okay okay if you go to a delhi where 45 degrees yeah. temperature you can if you are if you are willing to spend that sort of money because today the latest acs will consume at least 2 kva on the ups itself oh wow okay. okay earlier it used to be 4 kva but nowadays that inverter ac and all has come yes. where the power consumption is much less yes so you can still manage with a little less but if the temperature is so high and you are willing to spend on a 2 kva or a 3 kva you can all most of the branded good quality ups systems are capable of taking any load Oh wow okay. AC refrigerator grinder washing machine computer just you have to spend it's money multi-load. on the batteries it's multi load it's multi load but you have to spend money on the batteries yes batteries again it depends on the backup time okay it depends on the quality of the batteries there are so many batteries available we'll get to that next yeah so for ups you primarily focus on the nature of the load nature of the load is very important mm-hmm. if you want it to be a fit and forget and w- what else do you consider if you want it to be fit and forget on ups see there is ups available for anything that's mm. not the point mm. the point is what the customer actually wants because most of the time the customer doesn't know what he wants <laughs> see invariably see it's not something everybody is not an engineer right 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 okay so they are not uh, obviously they do not know about all that invariably they get guided or misguided by either a neighbor or uh, some electrical of electrician huh. or somebody says that you put this and invariably they will have some contact somewhere yeah. they have an ulterior motive of trying to make you buy a bigger ups than what you require so sometimes when uh, people through some other friends get my contact and then they say that sir i want a ups this is what it is i talk to them for 5 10 minutes 15 minutes digging out what are the loads they want <laughs> so now my next question for you is very interesting so we moved all of our offices to home so we we shipped computers to all of our employees homes uh, we shipped computers to all the partners homes and uh, we all work from home now uh, of course this has been the trend for all software companies as well there's an additional load which was unexpected so today if you have to suggest someone so let's take my example right so give give me some parameters what's the load so there's three people working from home at my house it's a 3 bhk home all of them have plugged in la- uh, laptop chargers 100 watt laptop chargers approximately i don't know how that calculation works or what's the formula if you're willing to share i'll of course add it here so there's three laptops internet we have like two internet connections always on and of course i have external monitors i have two external monitors always on and uh, same thing for you know the other two people who are working my wife my younger brother now this is a completely new sort of a dynamic which has come in a lot of homes so now how does one think of you know planning for a ups for such a scenario oh i want to add here the machines which i have they are you know high end machines they are used for creating videos editing videos yeah. see yours is a very special type uh-huh. because it doesn't exist in everybody's house true 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 now yeah. let's take my daughter works for a company right now she doesn't have any high end uh, computers it's all the normal office correct. computers correct so this is what exists in 99% of the houses right, right 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 so when it's a laptop it's only we calculate it around 80 va oh or you take it as about 67 70 watts people are more uh, right uh, conversant with wattage yeah. so you can take it as about 60 70 watts okay a normal laptop because the consumption is much less correct a laptop has an inbuilt battery correct so it will run for 2 hours in any case <laughs> right it right. doesn't really require a ups support right but some people will say that sir my laptop is a little old the battery is not i don't get correct. more than half an hour one hour then what you need to take around very limited it's only 60 70 watts okay see when i give you a ups of say 1 kva hmm. it can take about say approximately 750 800 watts okay generally about 800 watts you take okay the, the laptop is only 60 70 watts correct okay nothing significant correct your wifi and all is literally not to be considered at all <laughs> it doesn't consume anything practically it doesn't consume anything oh, okay. you don't even have to really take it into consideration okay like in cricket you know the no balls and the whites you can just take it <laughs> you can just take it's it just like just a that. marginal error very marginal you can't commit an error okay how many at home how many uh, you will have yeah right couple of wi-fi's max you take three also it doesn't make any difference okay it's all two in, insignificant loads so that's not to be taken we are more concerned whether you have a desktop with a f- maybe 15 18 inch monitor 19 inch monitor 
being a professional if you have something like that then i i want to know what it is right okay but that's not the case we don't get a nickel every every other day right, it's right, just right. a normal customer so you're telling the laptop the wifi and all they are very small loads the monitor may be a large load that is in your case okay if you have one uh, yeah see if you go to any other software engineer they, they who may be working monitors. from home yeah, yeah, yeah. they will not have such big monitors and Correct. all that even if the monitor is big it's not that it's going to i am talking about if you have a server type or a very okay. expensive computer okay. which is very power sensitive okay you power know? sensitive sensitive so what do you mean by power sensitive see when you go for a high end server hmm. uh, it requires exact voltage it requires frequency everything has to be conditioned power okay see the ups what we were talking about all this is called a backup power okay that is if the power fails my lights will work my fan will work my computer will work my tv will work this is called backup ups okay for an high end system when you go for a server or a high end server or you go to a large software company they don't require a backup ups it's called power conditioner okay whatever be the input power from the bescom it conditions that power and gives very regulated power to the load oh because your computer has to be safeguarded against hostile incoming power okay the incoming power can be very hostile at times okay it could be 280 volts it could be 140 volts all sorts of things can happen correct so when that incoming power is so hostile you need to have a power conditioner which gives you reliable power okay otherwise your server which could be running into lakhs of rupees could if it gets damaged you yeah. will end up spending it could be a forget about the cost loss. factor yeah. it is the entire so, life depends on that server right 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 the entire right. network damaged, across the world gone. yeah so there it's a different ball game altogether okay you it know, requires very a, specific specific yes, specialized kind there of all it is there and all it is only totally technical selling you know all the big companies are involved in the sale that's a different market altogether So we are addressing the home segment and the small and medium enterprises where people are not using such expensive gadgets interesting okay okay so moving on to my next question this of course is going to be a upcoming problem you know with lot of announcements power costs going higher power cuts becoming a norm is ups requirements in apartment societies in uh, you know apartment buildings apart from you know the individual home So from an individual home perspective i understood you know how do you think about purchasing a ups but how do you evaluate a decision if any apartment society is watching this so again it all depends on the uh, standard of the apartment okay. when you go to high end apartments hmm. uh, you already paid 2 crores 1.5 crores 3 crores and all that yeah. you are assured of 24 hours power with the generator correct because they are all high end you have paid the money for all that correct so so it's all taken care hmm. but when you go for the 30 lakhs 40 lakhs 50 lakhs sort of apartments hmm. generally you will not have all these facilities correct sometimes they give a generator where they will give you one light in the house that's it correct you will not be in pitch dark correct okay there will be only one light that's not good enough correct you want children to study you want the tv to be running for an elder whatever it is so there you will end up still you will definitely require a ups to support the entire house correct okay so apartment it depends on the cost of the apartment and what are the facilities that have been given so say the apartment wants to give an elevator is it, is it something which should be powered by the ups or you think it should be better powered by a genset no again it depends on the size of the apartment like if you go to a apartment which is some 20 floors hmm. you can't give a ups there it will have a generator by default okay. and the generator will switch on because there may be 1000 people staying in that whole building correct so there the economics is different Okay. You know when it gets divided between 1000 people or say 300 families <coughs> the cost will be somewhat manageable. Okay. But when you go to an apartment which has got only 10 houses, 20 houses and it is five floors. Hmm. <laughs> there they may not even have the generator to keep there's no space even to keep a generator <laughs> because the site itself will be only some 5000 square feet, 6000 square feet. Correct. Something like that you won't even have space to keep a generator. Correct. So there they have First of all you can't keep a generator secondly it's not economical to have a generator it becomes very expensive it becomes very expensive so their ups is the right uh, option okay we have many ups running for the last 10 12 years okay and uh, there it is four floor five floors correct especially uh, people who bought apartments 20 years back 20 25 years back hmm. they would have bought it when they were 35 40 today they're all 60 plus yeah so they can't go up and down correct 
so yeah. our ups will support the whole day okay i give tubular batteries where it not only gives 8 to 10 years life hmm. this is another blunder which people commit if you don't go for the correct battery hmm. you will end up replacing batteries every 3 years 4 years 5 years we'll keep on replacing batteries which will make it extremely expensive so we're going to talk about batteries in some time but before that i have another question there is a growing trend of people trying to get off grid which is you know moving to a slightly remote location getting off grid having good internet but making sure that you are not dependent on you know the normal electric supply maybe putting some sort of solar or some sort of other generation so for such places for such homes you know what's your suggestion when they are going about choosing a utility when there's no uh, when it is out station mm-hmm. uh, where the reliability of power is very limited yeah solar is the best option okay because if i give battery let's say there are people who have come to me yeah and said that sir i am staying uh, the 40 km 50 km 100 km from bangalore mm. and there's no power sometimes for two days i tell them there's no other option please go ahead with solar okay i don't deal in solar okay. i just tell them go for a solar because solar is tra- power is there all the time right whereas my ups however big batteries i give you it will ah. give you 10 12 hours 15 hours no but see they put solar but the power has to be stored somewhere right so that they can use at night so how do you how does that that work? is it have a battery okay so it's different from the normal ups which we have at home it is more or less the same it will have a charge controller okay and it will be linked to the panels okay see when the solar energy is there hmm. it is let's say these lights are all powered by solar energy right now hmm. it's not drawing from the bescom hmm. it these lights fans everything is running on the solar energy okay at the same time it's it's charging the battery also okay 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 so night after 6 o'clock it i will be drawing power from the battery okay throughout the night it will be running on my battery okay so if you see 24 hours <coughs> there's no power consumption from the electricity board correct Okay, whole day, twenty-four hours, it's been running only on solar. Correct. By next day morning, my battery may go dead. So, what kind of are they the same kind of batteries which are used in home UPSs? Like, is it different? You need to go for tubular batteries. Say, generally, most people will give you tubular batteries. Hmm. But if you go for the wrong battery, again, the penalty is you may not get the required backup. Mm-hmm. The two errors people will make: one is going for the wrong battery and the wrong sizing. So I'm glad you brought this up. So as we are going now, so you've explained the parameters, how do you prioritize, how to choose, etc. What are common mistakes you've seen people do? See, the common mistake is most people are price conscious. Okay. Okay. So they take three, four quotations, and then they see who's the cheapest. Okay. And then you go for that. That's the first blunder you can make. Okay. You are actually punishing yourself <laughs> because when you go for the cheapest. it defies logic you can't get the best product at the cheapest price right okay so when you select the wrong something somewhere is wrong invariably it is with the battery because when you go for a 1 kv or a 2 kv ups it's standard everywhere you don't have five models of 1 kva or 10 models of 2 kva it doesn't it's not like that you want a 1 kva of this particular brand you buy 1 kva from wherever you want you buy the same thing but when it comes to battery you got a host of batteries to select from there if you select the wrong battery just because one battery is 10000 another one is 8000 if you say oh 8000 is see generally people get misled by the ah of the battery okay. ampere hour okay. when you say 100 ampere hour right. 150 ampere hour right. 200 ampere hour that's where they get misled right okay now if you see a motorcycle advertisement it the newspaper will say 110 km per liter hmm. common sense everybody knows on road it will give only 55 <laughs> isn't it right same thing holds good in battery okay <clears throat> when you say 100 h uh-huh. on catalog it will be on the battery it will be put 100 h on okay. the warranty card it will be put 100 h okay there is a asterisk mark efficiency when you connect it to the ups it will go down by 25 30% <laughs> these are the second quality batteries which are generally called c20 okay capacity at the 20 hour rating it is called okay. capacity at the 20 c20 in okay. short okay this is the second quality okay this is what will get depreciated okay when you buy a 100h thinking in the road this guy also has given 100 this guy also has given 100h but somebody has given 10000 the other guy has given 8500 this is the difference okay the first quality is called c10 okay capacity at the 10 hour rate okay 
when you buy this 100H and that 100H, there's a price difference of 10%, 15%. What is the difference is, the second quality battery when you connect it to the UPS, uh -huh. the capacity of the battery, what you thought is 100H, uh -huh. will actually be only 70 or 75 when you connect it to the UPS. Whereas in C10? C10 will remain 100. Oh wow. Okay. So you will get the desired backup. Okay. You will get the desired life also. I'm very curious now. So let's get into types of batteries. You gave us a quality filter, but types are what? What are the common types of batteries which are available in the market? See, the automotive battery is only for automobiles. Correct. So forget about that. I'm talking about home. Yeah. As far as the home segment is concerned, you have the tubular batteries. Correct. Right. In the tubular itself, if you take any particular brand, mm -hmm. they will say that 100H, I've got two, three models or four models also sometimes. Okay. I have come across even four models, but nowadays they have even reduced it to some two, three because it's causing too much of confusion in the market. No, nobody know 100 H if there are four models, each one is different price. <laughs> you don't know what to sell. It creates, even the yeah, seller may not the know. Consumer, the even the seller, yeah. if a seller is not qualified, <laughs> so if they ask me what's the difference between these four models, I'll talk for one hour. Yeah. But when uh, most of the guys are not technical, right? So when the customer asks, "What is the difference?" They themselves will not know what is the difference, <laughs> isn't it? Because right, they are non-technical. Right. The catalog says 100h, 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 100h. Right. Seven thousand, eight thousand, nine thousand, ten thousand. Right. The company doesn't give you support saying that this is the difference between the four. Nobody <laughs> gives you. Right. So the dealer remains ignorant. He'll sell the cheapest one or what is fastest moving. Fastest. He wants an order. That's it. You <laughs> go to hell. So he will say, take the 7,000, whatever you want, you take and close the matter. <laughs> right. And tomorrow it fails. They'll say, boss, I don't know. You asked me for this brand. I gave you. If it has failed, go and ask him. So tubular batteries is one. What else? What is this commonly available? See, automotive and the third one is sealed batteries. Okay. That is called either VRLA, valve regulated lead acid batteries. Okay. Or it's called SMF. Okay. Sealed maintenance free. Okay. Sealed maintenance free is generally used by software companies oh okay okay for their online ups okay this battery is made only for short duration backup until the generator switches on oh the generator switches on in just a matter of few seconds okay. five seconds because it'll have a amf panel amf is automatic mains failure okay when the power fails nobody goes and manually right, switches right, right. on and automatically switches on but it takes some time that intermediate period of just say five seconds or ten seconds this ups will work on the battery so these lead acid batteries are not used at home these are sealed maintenance free batteries. Okay. These are used only in software companies. Okay. Only for those few seconds or few is, minutes is, of this backup. Is, this is for their server and all that stuff, right? Yes. For okay. software companies basically. Okay. Okay. This they will take only for 10 minutes backup. Oh, okay. 15 minutes. Okay. It depends on the customer, but definitely not more than half an hour. Okay. Okay. But when you go to large companies, they'll take only 10 minutes, 15 minutes because they'll have generator. They'll have a standby generator. If this fails, this will take up. So all these safety things will be there. So they'll say 10 minutes is now. Because between a 10 minute and 20 minute, they'll spend lakhs of rupees. The difference will be lakhs. Oh. Right? Between correct, a 10 correct. minute backup. Because it's all huge infrastructure. Correct. But for home, this is not used. For home, this, primarily. No, this cannot be used. This should not. This can be used. Huh. He, every battery is a 12 volt battery. Okay. You go connect this in your house, it'll work. But you shouldn't spend so much money. It's not for that application. It's not the money aspect. The structure of the battery inside is different. This is where I'm telling you, okay. unless you know the chemistry, unless you know the interior of this battery, huh. you will not know what you're talking about. <laughs> right, right. I got it. The sealed battery, the uh -huh. structure of the plates, you must have heard about plates. Correct. There's a positive plate, there's a yes. negative plate and all that. Yeah. The structure of this plate hmm. is different for a sealed battery. Okay. So what's the right? implication? Like. Uh, the design is such that huh. when the power fails, huh. the sealed battery huh. can give you a large amount of current for a short period of time. Okay. 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 Like you start a car, <coughs> draws a lot of power to start the engine. Correct. After that, there's nothing. Correct. Correct. What correct. is that to? There's nothing to support. So correct. the vehicle has started. Like that, these batteries, when the power goes, hmm. 200 computers, 300 computers will be connected to the UPS or even 500 computers will be connected to the UPS. So the current drawn from the battery will be very high. Okay. But it's only for 10 seconds until the generator switches on. Correct. The sealed battery is made for that application. Okay. Whereas the tubular battery for your home or small and medium enterprises, they want 3 hours, 4 hours, 5 hours backup or at least 2 hours. 
Okay. The tubular battery structure is different. The plate is different mm -hmm. where it will give you medium amount of current for a long period of time. Got it. In a software company, when the power fails, let's say 100 amps is drawn, which is high current for a short period of time. Correct. In a home or office environment, the current will not be 100 amps. Correct. Because you don't put everything on in your house <coughs> and sit down in somewhere. Right. Generally, what, however big the house is, you will have only 10% load switched on at any point of time. Correct. So, the tubular battery is made to give you a steady current for a long period of time. Okay. So, you can use it for 4 hours, 6 hours, 8 hours. Without any issues. Which you can't use a sealed battery. Okay. So, generally speaking, at homes, you primarily use tubular batteries. And you should opt for C10 grade of tubular batteries. C10 grade is the battery which will give you a long life. Okay. It is without any compromises. Okay. If you see the, how do you know all that? Just see the weight of the battery, you will know. <laughs> okay. You don't have to be technically qualified in all this. Okay. A C10 100H, huh. let's say it is 35 kgs. Huh. A C20 huh. will be 8 kgs lesser than that. <laughs> Because the masala is that much less inside. Got it, got it, got it. To the store plates, power. The yeah. plates are made out of lead. Okay. The positive plate is made of lead dioxide. The negative plate is made out of lead. Okay. Lead is what is giving you the energy. Right. Chemical energy is converted to electrical energy and supplied to the load. Correct. Okay. That chemical energy is stored in that plate. Correct. In a C20, the thickness of the plate will be much less. <laughs> In right. a C10, it will be much thicker. So, direct 8 kg weight loss. Weight loss. Yeah. So, what happens? The, the life of this battery will be shorter. Okay. Because current is moving inside the battery 24 hours. Okay. Either charging or discharging. Correct. Both current is flowing. Correct. When this is happening on a daily basis, 24 bar 7, the plate which is thinner will get damaged much faster. Okay. So, 3 years, 4 years, <coughs> the battery is gone, you have to replace. Oh. So, I am very hard at giving C10. I tell the customers, sir, price difference is 1500 rupees. Don't mind this. I don't want you to come back to me for the next 8 to 10 years. Correct. Makes sense. Right. It makes sense to you. What sense it makes to me? I build a reputation. That <laughs> that the, you next know what sale, I'm talking about. the next sale, I don't have to talk to you for even a minute. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. And it comes for 8 to 10 years. I don't talk to any customer. They'll simply say, sir, that battery, same battery, you put one more <laughs> after 10 years. So, my efforts are very little after... Uh, because you've already educated, you've yeah, spent time in and, doing uh, that. Having done this for 40 years, today I don't have to put any effort for a resale. So, let's move on to my next question. In our phones, we have lithium-ion batteries. Uh, uh, is there any chance lithium-ion batteries come to home? See, it's already released by a few companies. Mm -hmm. But I don't sell all these things because... Unless I have data to prove mm -hmm. that the performance is safe, mm. it's going to last this long because the cost is quite exorbitant. Right now, it's exorbitant. Oh, okay. You know, I did get some message from some companies that we have released this, some 70,000, 80,000 and all that. I will not market those. Okay. Unless I have data to prove to myself. If I don't install it in my house, I will not sell it to anybody. Wow. My simple thing is that. So, you still I don't have faith in a lot of these lithium-ion batteries? It's not a question of faith. I want data to prove. You don't do experiment in your laboratory and come and tell me, like, <laughs> give me lectures. <laughs> I will not accept all that. Right, right, Because right. the companies will do all this to make their sale. <coughs> but I am the one who is facing you. Right. Isn't it? You right. come to me with trust and I sell you a lithium-ion without knowing anything about it. I don't know whether it's safe. Now, how many two-wheelers you have seen? Burn up. Burn up. Yeah. Now, supposing something happens in a house, who is responsible for that? Oh, how is the property loss is huge? Huge. Some children are there, old people, something happens. I don't want to take all that risk. Right. Okay. So, if I will not put it in my house, I will not suggest So, your suggestion house. is go for C10 grade tubular batteries always. See, this is proven. I am selling it for 40 years. Mm -hmm. And my father, as I told you, has been from 1950, which is some 65 years now. Wow. So, we know that yes, this is if, tried, I, tested. if I give this... Everybody is safe. Right. There's nothing to worry. And I'm very curious on one particular question. What about high temperature areas or high humidity areas? Even in those areas, these batteries function well? The tubular batteries, see, even if you go to a Delhi, Bombay, where the humidity is high, mm -hmm. these batteries will still withstand. Okay. May not give you 10 years life, mm -hmm. may give you a little less, but still it's not going to be miserable. 
okay it still be good even if the temperature is more and wherever we go for insulation we tell the customer please keep it in a cool place okay temperature may be 35 but <coughs> if you keep it in the corner there it will not be 35 it may be 25 26 27 still the battery will give you a damn good life and uh, what about things like fire hazards and all that now that we talk about fire like lithium ion of course you know if it gets punctured a little bit it's going to blow up it's it's a ticking bomb it's not bomb, only that see the the characteristics of a lithium ion is different mm -hmm. see in a lead acid battery when the battery gets fully charged there'll be a small amount of current running through the battery to keep it fully charged that's called the trickle current okay there'll be a few milliamps of current flowing through the battery to keep it fully charged 24 hours a day okay lithium ion cannot be like that okay when the battery gets fully charged it should cut off power completely okay if any error happens there hmm. it can be explosive wow okay okay i don't want to take all those chances <laughs> right now <laughs> you're waiting for the tech to prove itself any product there are companies which come and say that sir we have started uh, you know new company and all that i tell them okay come after 3 years <laughs> makes sense so very interesting two things one is i want to know whether your product will work and second i want to know whether you exist <laughs> that makes because they will sell ha huh. and they will vanish yeah i am not talking about local companies i don't know whether i am allowed to uh, mention a few it's, big names it's your call i mean i have not i mean no i am hopes. only talking facts aha uh -huh. uh usha came out with ups uh -huh. crompton aha uh -huh. yamaha All lithium ion? No, no. I am talking the last twenty years. Normal UPS. Okay. I can keep on naming so many. I am not able to Tata's. remember also VideoCon. Uh huh. So many. All these are big names, isn't it? Right, right. Nobody is there in the market. Wow. So if I had sold it to you, yeah, I will have to answer you. <laughs> I cannot tell you. Go and meet uh, that company chairman. I cannot tell you. Right. I lose my face because you will ask me, Shankar. Then why did you sell? So coming to my next question what are good brands of batteries and good brands of UPS which you generally recommend to your customers See for home and uh, office segment today luminous live fast microtech these are good brands uh, good brands which have been there for a long time Now there are some battery companies which are making UPS mm -hmm. generally it is sticker technology okay they'll get it done by somebody else and just, just put, put a sticker. sticker and sell right i tell customers they tell me sir give me this brand along with their battery i tell them sir buy a ups from a ups company hmm. buy a battery from a battery company <laughs> yeah makes sense okay because day in and day out they have spent every rupee of their r&d on developing a battery correct these people have developed every single rupee on developing a proper ups correct so if you put like that you can be safe and secondly when this company is selling Uh, 10000 rupees per day hmm. you will have enough service it's like a maruti 800 <laughs> you go to any part of the country you will get service so tell them buy this any day they'll come and give you service right likewise this battery company sells 10000 batteries a day any time you call they will also come right makes sense okay makes sense but if you buy a battery from a ups company or ups from a battery company There's they'll have one conflict. engineer taking care of entire karnataka <laughs> <laughs> right makes sense So, what are good battery companies you suggest? UPS, you told Luminous, Microtech. See, Exide is as far as battery tubular batteries are concerned. Exide is a proven company. Okay. They've been there for so long, and tubular batteries. Those days, forty, fifty years back, Exide is Calcutta based. Okay. And in Calcutta, there used to be power only for five, six hours a day. <laughs> okay. Eighteen hours, there'll be no power. Okay. So that is why they started a battery called EL tubular. Okay. EL means emergency lighting. Okay that is how the word EL was coined some 30 years back or 40 years back okay so that was created for the uh, west bengal market, market. Ah. where there was no power for 18 hours a day okay so they needed batteries which gave long backup time okay but now it is of course used for various applications computers and everything is being used that's a fantastic battery okay but again you will have to select the right battery in that in that also Yeah. They, have, they have to see models keep coming. Uh, they keep changing, isn't it? It's no Correct. longer stage. Uh, it's dynamic. They keep on releasing new models. Correct. One carries twenty-four months warranty. Another one thirty-six. Another one forty-eight. Right. You should know which battery carries warranty when used in the house. So you suggest typically going ahead with Exide. It's a well-known brand and it's pretty good. Well-known brand tubular. As far as tubular is concerned, uh -huh. uh, basically 
you need to select the right model of course like as i Given told you irrespective of the manufacturer the model has to be perfect model has to be because if you buy the wrong model uh, the guarantee card will say 36 months warranty but if you use it for the wrong application that's not it valid. won't get it won't carry warranty right 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 the dealer may sell it to you you may have a warranty card right you can't go to court and say i have a warranty card it has failed if your application is wrong you you have no legal validity to go and find the case also makes sense because it's a conditional warranty Correct. you have to use it for the right application that is where the whole lacuna is because even the dealer is ignorant most of them are at least ignorant if not all or most of them are ignorant and the customer obviously doesn't know about all these how do i know about the product yeah, personally yeah. of course so that is where the whole problem is as long as it works you escape everybody escapes <laughs> okay but supposing something happens right then and only the problem comes absolutely and i mean of course 40 years you must have installed in tens of thousands of houses so you have sufficient data to draw from finally my only question is this you know from a fire hazard perspective what do you think how, how do you think customers should be careful see when they do the insulation they should not compromise on the wires the okay. quality of the wire thickness of the wire okay so generally we do the insulation okay we tell them you buy the wires and give ha huh. Okay, I'll tell you what it is. Go buy from a nearby shop and give. Hmm. This is what I require. Is this? this is what I require. Just buy it and give. We'll do the installation free of cost. Hmm. So there ends the matter. Okay. But when you compromise on certain things on hmm. cost, you know somebody says he'll do cheaper. In fact, about two months back, uh, a good friend of mine hmm. said that uh, on a one point five kV is running some eight computers. Hmm. Okay, so he said, why should I go for a higher capacity UPS? then i sent him the picture of uh, two fire accidents which took place in a hospital in uh, uh, columbia Hyder- asia uh, ah yeah that and another one on brigade road okay. uh, it happened this did not this i don't know whether it came in the paper but that came in the paper uh-huh. it's then on the internet okay. i took a picture and sent it to him huh. i said if you are prepared to take a risk you do what you want okay. i will not stand guarantee for all this uh-huh. when you compromise on these things nothing happens overnight okay isn't it every wire however underrating you put hmm. it will sustain for some time correct i can carry only 50 kg weight but if you give me 75 i will be able to carry for may not be half an hour but maybe for 2 3 minutes huh. but i'll collapse correct same way i told him this is the risk you are taking right. and he said oh my god uh, no 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 i don't want to take all that risk so kindly give me the right ups so when i gave him the right ups now it will run for years together without any problem because the ups is designed for that the wiring is designed to take that load right you so have to be careful be, about uh, so these are the points of failures have the right ups have the right wires right capacity ups people try to compromise on that oh i am running this for so many uh, maybe 2 years 3 years so why should i change the ups why should i do this why should i spend on that it's all penny wise pound, pound foolish correct you do something you do not know what risk you are taking makes sense something happens Uh, he said i don't want my building to go in flames <laughs> something happens you don't know isn't it fire starts yeah. you don't know where it's going to end right great i mean this is quite informative guys i hope you like this video i leave uh, contact details of shankar sir in the description below if you guys have any ups requirements please do get in touch with him shankar sir thank you so much I have for watching no, i have no issues people can send me a mail and i can even give them guidance absolutely not necessary that uh, every uh, every call i don't expect a sale no of course in uh, many cases i tell them you don't require a ups also <laughs> makes sense because the point is not earning money is not the point earning a customer is important makes sense when the customer has confidence they'll be with us lifelong absolutely And it's a quality sale what i like to do that right. i there are people who come and tell me i want a 2k 1k va uh, and they will ask for something higher or sometimes lower also mm-hmm. they require a 3 kv they ask me for 2 kv or vice versa both can happen so i tell them in both cases i tell them this is the actual capacity what you require makes sense so i'll see if i can convert some of these kv calculations into a spreadsheet and i can uh, link it in the description below of course you can get in touch with him they primarily serve in the bangalore market they've been in this space for a very long time worked with all the major brands Thank you so much for this Shankar sir. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks a lot. Yeah.